Got beans? Get beans. Burder Butter Beans Studio. You know who it is? Hey guys, it's Burder Butter Beans Studio, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a 3D model in Paint 3D and import that into Unity. So you can see I'm making a game. It's called The Door to Toaster. I'm debating whether to call it the best thing since sliced bread. But ideally, you're a slice of bread, and you have to travel through these doors. Uh, you have to go through the correct doors to reach the end goal, which is a toaster. Um, but these models were made in, in Paint 3D. So I'll be showing you how to do that. So we can create a new project. Click 3D Shapes. I want to make a cone. So I'm going to click 3D Shapes and click Cone. I'll select a color, which I want is orange. And you want to stick away from dull metal and polished metal because when you create the texture in Blender, it'll be a black color instead of the color that you chose. So you can stick with either gloss or matte. Uh, I'll just do matte. So with the cone selected and the color I want, I'll just create the top part of the cone. All right, and if you want to turn off this white background, you can click on Canvas, turn off this switch under Show Canvas, click Brush. I have the marker selected, and I want the color white. So it also remembers the last material, which was matte. OK, so I'm just going to draw some white lines around the cone. Uh, wherever your mouse is pointed is where it'll zoom in if you use the metal mouse wheel. And then I'll try to draw a line across. And I'll click 3D view so I can rotate around the cone. I'll zoom in and keep drawing that line until they meet at the end. Okay, we'll draw another line and we'll try to stay parallel to the one on top. Okay, and then with the paint bucket tool here, it's called fill. I'll just click in this area that I drew so it fills between those two lines. I'll choose the marker tool again. And this time we're going to make a line underneath that first one. <clears throat> I'll use a eraser tool to make that line a little more straight. And we're going to meet all the way over here. That will make one more line. Oh, whoops. It looks like the pressure changed. I'm going to try that again. Okay, then we'll rotate around. And there they go. I'll use the fill tool, fill that in with white. And the last part is gonna be a cube. So I'll click 3D shapes. I'll select the cube, the matte material and the orange color I chose. Then I can click and drag a cube to be the base of the cone. Then if you click and hold this icon, and then you can drag it back and forth, I want it to go inside the cone. I'll click on the cube, I'll drag it down, and notice how it snaps to the bottom part. Then I'm going to rotate to the top view. I'll zoom out, stretch this so it's a bit longer than the cone. Stretch it on this side as well. And make sure they're about the same distance across. There we go. So that's the cone. So now we can click Menu, Save As. I always save it as a Paint 3D project first. We'll call it Cone. And we'll click Save in Paint 3D. Depending on how many shapes you have, it could take longer to save. And then we'll click Menu, Save As, 
3D model. We'll call it cone. I already had one here, but I'll call it cone new. Click save, make sure it's GLB format because we'll be importing that format into Blender. So now we can open Blender and we can choose a general template. Press A to select everything, press the delete key. Then I like to go to UV editing and we can click file, import, GLB. I have a favorites folder called models and I have a folder called GLB. And then here's the cone new that I made in paint 3D. So double click to import and notice there's no textures. So we need to click on viewport shading and it'll show our textures. So I'll click the top part of the cone to select it. And then I'll press the tab key zoom out and essentially you can imagine peeling an orange and flattening it out that's essentially what this part of the screen is doing it's unwrapping this entire texture to fit in this in the space of a square and then we can save this by clicking image save as go to models i created an fbx folder which is another type of format for 3d models Inside that folder, I have a textures folder. And then I'm gonna make a new folder called cone new. Double click, and then you can double click on this once, double click again to select the entire file name. And this is gonna be called cone middle. I'll click save as image, press tab to deselect. Then I'll click on the bottom square and then press tab to edit. I'll notice it didn't bring up a texture of what that orange color is supposed to be. So I'll show you how we can fix that later. Um, but for now, press A to select everything in the scene. Then we go to file, export, and we're gonna export it as an FBX, which is a, <clears throat> a unity friendly file so fbx go to my favorites folder go to my fbx folder and then we're going to rename this to cone so over here you don't want all these object types selected so i normally just click on armature to highlight it blue then hold shift and click on mesh also, let's check the box for selected objects. And this one's very important, apply transform. It'll retain the same size as a 3D model was the way you made it. If you don't check this, it'll be ginormous inside of Unity. So let's export the FBX. And I'm gonna hop back into Unity. So I'm gonna go to the projects view. Uh, folder and then FBX. Here's the cone I made. So I'm going to hold and drag it here. It still doesn't have any textures. Uh, let's turn off gizmos so you don't get confused with all those items. And then, okay, so I like to unpack the prefab. So right click the 3D model, click unpack. Then let's drop it down. And then in our FBX folder, remember we had a texture folder and we made a folder called cone new. So this is the top part of the cone, the picture we exported from Blender. So right click in this folder, click create and click material. And I name it the same as the image, cone middle. And for the best uh, quality, click on the texture image. Make sure you're in the inspector tab. Um, and then change the filter mode from bilinear to point no filter. And then to compress the file size, you can keep it on normal quality and use crunch compression. 
Just make sure that it's in multiples of four, so it has to be a perfect square and divisible by four. Click apply. Okay. So now click on the cone middle material that you made earlier and drag this image onto the albedo square. So now the material has the image on it. So if we click on the top part of our cone, here it'll say element zero, material 56. We can replace that by dragging cone middle onto it. And look at that. So now we have the top part of our cone. How are we gonna get this part? Uh, we can right click to make a new material. We call this cone base. And then with the albedo, we can click this eyedropper tool and uh, we can click on the 3D model, but it's gonna give us a darker orange. So what we can do instead is go back to paint 3D and then click on the orange color. And you see this hex code? This is the color converted to a six character digit format. So I'm gonna select this, right click copy, go back to Unity, click on the albedo, this time the square next to the eyedropper, and inside the hexadecimal, I'm just gonna click it and then click paste. And this is the exact orange that we had from the project. So now we can click on the base square, which we made earlier, and drag cone base onto element 0, 58. And there you go. Now you have a cone. And that was entirely made in Paint 3D. Um, I always found it difficult to import Paint 3D models because all the textures weren't there, but I learned my own method of um, making all the textures manually, which can sometimes be a pain. Uh, you can imagine how crazy it was for this chest over here. Um, but once you get the hang of it, it should be kind of fun when you do it. These, co these coins here. So there you go. Uh, you can duplicate the cone if you'd like by pressing Control D. You can make another one. I'm not sure where this is going to be. Maybe you can use the hammer to knock them out of your way. Um, I'll be making each room slightly more difficult than the last. But there you go. You, you can now make 3D models easily inside of Paint 3D. And then it just takes a bit of work to export all those textures, create the materials. But I find making models in Paint 3D a lot easier than trying to model them in Blender. Um, also, you get that cartoony uh, vibe from it. Um, if you want your object to be metallic, um, before, remember I said that you couldn't choose dull metal or polished metal in Paint 3D. Um, you can actually go to your folder, FBX Textures, Cone New, and then I have Cone Middle, which is the top part. So if you want it to be metallic and shiny, you can increase the metallic value by clicking on the material and dragging this slider all the way to the right. And now it has a metallic look to it. But if you want it to be reflective as well, you can drag the smoothness to the right and it captures the reflections of the environment, which is pretty cool. You can do the same for say the cone base, although this is not a shiny metallic object, so I won't be doing that. Uh, but that's how you would make it metallic instead of doing it in Paint 3D, which is known to break uh, the colors that you have. So if you drew on it, let's say you drew uh, some images on your 3D model, and then you, you had the metallic uh, texture in Paint 3D, it's not gonna transfer over. The entire model will be black. So um, you can just make it metallic manually in Unity. So if you like the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and turn on notifications so I can post more content and you get notified. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.
You know who it is.